My people in the balcony. That was actually pretty good. Hey, if you're a guest this morning at Twickenham, welcome. We're, we're glad to have you. Thanks for coming out to be with us. If you're uh, from in town, uh, we're thrilled that you're here. If you're looking for a new church home, we are always looking for new family members. We'd love to talk with you, uh, see if you have any questions about how we do things and what we believe and what we're trying to accomplish or what God's trying to accomplish through us. And I just love to visit. So glad you're here. Thanks for coming out. If you're a guest from out of town, we are hoping that you have safe travels. If you're heading back uh, soon, we know we've got some folks that are gone, some folks that are here. If you're from out of town, Huntsville is a very accommodating place. Most churches have to go down to the river to pray. Here, the river comes to us. So... <laughs> We're, you know, it's a really hospitable town. We're just glad you're here. Hey, a program note here for next week. By the way, there's a card uh, in front of, in the seat in front of you. You can fill that out if you're a guest. And then uh, if you have a prayer request, put that down and we'll, we'll pray over that prayer request. You can put those on the plate when it passes a little bit later in the service. Uh, next week, January 3rd, we are uh, having what we're calling Shepherd Sunday. Um, we're going to introduce an organized way of making sure that every member at Twickenham knows at least one elder or one shepherd and his wife, and uh, that if you have a, a need, a concern, a question, you'll, you'll know at least one shepherd or one elder that you can reach out to. We're, we're just trying to make sure that everybody has that kind of connection. Um, Make sure that you have access to one specific elder. doesn't mean that you have to go to that one, but we want to make sure everybody's got one of those. Now, 
you should, if you're a, a Twickenham member, you should have received an email this week, um, late this week, about which room you're supposed to go to and who your shepherd is going to be. If you did not receive an email, if you're a, a Twickenham member and you did not receive an email, that's totally Steve Krieger's fault, okay? <laughs> or, and mine. Steve and I have worked on that together, and if, you're not, if you didn't get an email or some kind of notification, that's on us. If you'll check in with us this week, uh, shoot me an email, jody at twickenham.org or, or steve at twickenham.org. Is that right? Uh, J-O-D-Y at twickenham.org. Th- then uh, we'll make sure that you get assigned to the, to the right, right shepherd and the shepherd gets assigned to you. Y- you'll have opportunity next Sunday morning at 9, 40, uh, 9 o'clock. Is that when we have Sunday school? I'm always here, so it doesn't really... It's my, the only day a week I work, so I come in early. So... Uh, 9 o'clock next Sunday morning, we'll do that in lieu of Sunday school classes. So you'll, you'll be meeting in those rooms with your shepherds. You can ask questions and kind of learn a little bit more about it. So that's an important, important, important thing for our church. We're trying to learn how to care more responsibly and completely for each other. And that'll, that'll be next Sunday morning, 9 a.m., okay? Um, renewal is on everybody's mind right now because it's, you know, the new year. And renewal is actually one of the most recurring themes in the Bible. David prayed, O Lord, renew a steadfast spirit within me, Psalm 51. Isaiah chapter 40 promises that God can renew the strength of the weak. And it's not just an Old Testament thing. In in 2 Corinthians 4, Paul wrote about being renewed inwardly day by day. Sometimes Bible writers will use the word restoration, but they're talking about the same thing. Peter, for example, and we, we did a series in, in 1 Peter earlier this year. Peter said, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you. David prayed, restore to me the joy of your salvation. So there's renewal, there's rest- restoration, and then there's this word revival. The writer of Psalm 85 asks, will you not revive us Again, And as if to answer, God told the prophet Isaiah, I live in a high and holy place, but also with those who are contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly, to revive the heart of the contrite. Renewal, restoration, revival. Everybody's thinking about that because it's the new year. The Bible's been talking about that for centuries. All three promise the same thing, and I think this is really critical for some of us in this room this morning. What is old can be made young. What is tired can be made fresh. What is broken can be mended. If it has been lost, it can be regained. If it is dry, and barren as a desert, it can become alive and full of possibility. What is dead can be brought back to life. That's what we're talking about today in our worship. And it's a good way to end one year and begin another because a lot of us in this room feel really tired after the last 12 months. Some of us probably feel really tired after the last 12 days. We can remember a time when our commitment was high and our faith was strong and we felt spiritually alive. But for as many different reasons as there are people in the room, we just feel tired or dry or dead. Could you use some renewal, some revival, some restoration? Before we can experience that, we've got to recognize our need for it. And that's often the hardest part, recognizing your need for restoration, renewal, revival, and admitting it. We're tempted to think that we can self-restore, pull off a do-it-yourself revival. I I just need to buck up. I I just need to buckle down. I need to regroup, reboot, get a grip, up my game, hit the reset button. Maybe I just need to make a New Year's resolution. And we know how about 95% of those turn out. So this morning, we're going to start at a place where it's really hard to pretend that all we have to do is hit control, alt, delete. We're going to start this morning by remembering the cross of Jesus. If Jesus had to die on a cross to create a way for us to be 
reunited with God, and he did, then renewal, restoration, and revival are not something we can do without him. In just a moment, we're going to share the bread and the cup. These are symbols of Jesus' body and blood. The silence in that space will help us reflect on the ways we need the renewal and the restoration and the revival that only Jesus can give. Let's start with prayer. Father, you are gracious, compassionate, merciful. You are forgiving. You heal what is wounded. You repair what is broken. You recover what is lost. You renew what is worn. Give us the nerve to be uncontrived, the will to be open, the heart to be honest. And God, give us the humility to be needy. And then after you've given us all of those things, we will ask one more, that you will give us the courage to confess that we need to be revived, restored, and renewed. Thank you for this bread that we are about to receive. Thank you for making a way for us through Jesus. Through Jesus. Amen. Merciful Savior, gracious Redeemer, slow in your anger, rich in your love, full of compassion, longing to heal and bless. You will forgive all of my sin if I will confess. Here is my heart, Lord, I lay it open. Search every corner, cleanse every part. Here is my heart, Lord, yielded and broken. Merciful Lord, come and restore. Here is my heart. Praise you, Lord, for who you are and all the mighty things you've done. You saved my soul. You made me whole. 
I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. When I was lost and deep in sin, you sent your Holy Spirit in. You cleansed my heart. You made And now I sing my praise to you. I praise you, Lord, for who you are and all the mighty things you've done. You saved my soul. You made me whole. I praise I praise you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the cup that we're about to receive. A reminder of the violent way in which Jesus died. The price that had to be paid to make a way for us to be reunited with you. Forgive us when we imagine that we can be good enough or right enough or that we can manufacture our own righteousness such that we would earn a place in your courts. Help us to realize our complete neediness and the effort that you went to to fill that need, to fill that void with the blood of your son, Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O 
God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender, I surrender all. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Let's stand, shine your light, and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light, and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave, you're my Savior. You can move the mountains. God, you are mighty to save. You are mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit, crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of life. 
who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the God of all grace who has bought us and sought us and guided our ways. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. I stand to praise you, but I fall to my knees. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is so weak. Light the fire in my soul, fan the flame and make me whole. Lord, you know where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. I feel your arms around me as the power of your healing begins. Your spirit moves right through me like a mighty rushing wind. Light the fire in my soul, fan the flame and make me whole. Lord, you know been so light the fire in my heart again light the fire in my soul fan the flame and make me whole lord you know where i've been so light the fire in my heart again you see this It was a ladybug. Here you go, sweetie. No insects were harmed in the preparation of this sermon today. Hey, I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the mother of all renewal passages. Ezekiel chapter 37. That's kind of hard to find. So let your Bible kind of open to the middle. It should be around Psalms or Proverbs and then start turning pages to the left. And you'll go through Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, which is the saddest book in the Bible. And you'll get to Ezekiel, which is the weirdest book in the Bible. I kid you not. Ezekiel is the happy hunting ground for religious kookery from time immemorial. It's just strange. So let me give you some background on, on the book here uh, and the passage that we're going to look at. Um, to kind of help us handle it in a res responsible kind of way. The events chronicled in Ezekiel took place around 600 years before Jesus. When Ezekiel was born, Jerusalem was caught up in this huge geopolitical struggle between two reigning superpowers. You had Egypt to the south, uh, east, and then up to the northeast, you had Assyria. And you see Jerusalem, the, the blue dot right there below the word Judah. Jerusalem is right in the middle. And that particular stretch of land that, that borders the western Mediterranean, that is a really strategic piece of property. People have been fighting over that for centuries. They've been fussing about that stretch forever. So that's, that's right where, where Jerusalem is located, and it's right in the middle of all this Egypt is one superpower. At this time, Assyria is the other superpower. And Jerusalem has been occupied by one or the other until the Assyrians are destroyed by the Babylonians who kind of come up from Mesopotamia and take over all of that. And then when the Babylonians took Jerusalem, 
Ezekiel was among those who were captured and taken into exile 700 miles away from their home. And so the, the people of Jerusalem were scattered all over the Babylonian and Assyrian empires. So Ezekiel is, is writing against a backdrop in which all of the promises of God, the prophets who announced them, and even the institutions like the temple that supported the faith of the people, all of that is being called into question. So we, we can't just take any passage out of Ezekiel that we like and apply it to our situation as if it were written specifically to us, because it wasn't. It was, it was written to address a particular situation at a specific moment in history, but we can learn some things about how God relates to people and how we are supposed to relate to God. So we're going to be in Ezekiel chapter 37, and I just want to read through the, the 14 verses with you. That's kind of a big chunk but it'll be a good thing for us to, to hear the Word of God out loud together. So here we go. Listen up. The Lord, and this is from the New Living Translation, the Lord took hold of me. Did I tell you that this was weird? Okay, this is strange. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. I imagine sort of an area like Jones Valley, just that whole area from the mountain over toward the arsenal, just full of bones. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message, just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then I, as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones, and then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. If you're kind of remembering Genesis here and God breathed into man and he became a living soul, that's kind of what's going on here. This is recreation. Verse 10, so I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. And then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, O my people. I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord, that I the Lord have spoken and that I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. Did I tell you that was weird? God, God sets Ezekiel down in the middle of a, of a boneyard, a bone field, a valley full of bones. White, dry, grotesquely angled, broken bones lay everywhere. And, and he led Ezekiel back and forth through the valley among the bones. There, verse 2 is where he, he talks about how he, he led him through the valley. There's no clock to tell us 
how long verse 2 lasted, how long it took Ezekiel to tour the valley. For all we know, it, it took a calendar, not a clock, to count the time. You get the sense that scattered around this deadly landscape, there are millions and millions and millions of bones. Every now and then, you'll see a news story about the discovery of a skeleton in a field or at the bottom of a lake or in a wood. The first question we always ask is, who was it? Ezekiel doesn't ask that question, but in verse 11, God answers, these bones represent Israel. The nation was not literally dead. This is a, a vision, remember, but, but spiritually, Israel was dried up. They, they were spiritually dead. Spiritually, they were scattered. The second question, whenever a skeleton is discovered, the second question we always ask is, how did they die? Was, was foul play involved? Was this a murder? And the answer to that question, as far as the bones in Ezekiel 37 are concerned, is found one chapter back, chapter 36, verse 18. And the answer is yes, foul play was involved. Israel died because, God says, they polluted the land with murder and the worship of idols. Two things contributed to their self-inflicted death, violence and idolatry. In other words, they treated people like things and they treated things like God's. When you think about the reasons that we end up in need of renewal and restoration and revival, those reasons can usually fall into one of two columns, how people treat each other and how we relate to God. Some of us need restoration because we've been treated badly by other people. They treated us like things. They used us. And when we were no longer useful to them, they tossed us away like out-of-fashion furniture dumped out of the back of a truck at Goodwill. The only thing worse than being someone who was used and discarded is being a user, being the one who treats people like things. That will dry out your soul and turn your heart to stone faster than just about anything I know. The other reason that we often end up in need of revival, renewal, and restoration has to do with how we relate to God, or perhaps better said, how we try to replace God with something else. It's bad when you treat people like things. It's worse when you treat things like gods, which is what the Bible calls idolatry. And in chapter 36, verse 18, Ezekiel says that's one of the reasons Israel died and needed to be restored, because of idolatry. We don't talk much about idolatry, because it sounds about as relevant as Ezekiel. I mean, do you know anybody who carves a curious figure out of wood or stone and expects a deity to inhabit that wood or stone and to channel blessings and power through it? I don't know anybody who does that. But there are examples of idolatry all around us. Just down the parkway, there's a very ironic construction project going on. The largest storage facility in town is adding a new section, presumably because it has run out of room to store all the stuff people have run out of room to store at home. Like Israel, we have stopped paying attention to the God who made all things and have given our attention to things we ourselves have made or bought. And like Israel, we will end up dead and scattered. And some of us are already there. And that's why we're here this morning. Because we know we need to be renewed, revived, and restored. So let's ask the question Ezekiel asked God in verse 3. Can these bones live? Can we be renewed, restored, and revived? Yes. How? Renewal comes only from one place, from God. In verse 2, God led Israel on a tour of the valley of all those dry bones. And so what if God had said in the middle of that tour, Ezekiel, I want you to reassemble these bones. 
No mixing and matching. Don't try to make Manute Bowles femur match up Muggsy Bogues tibia. In fact, I'm, I'm going to give you the archaeological, the anatomical, and the forensic knowledge you need to do the job. Take all the time you need. Call me when you're finished reassembling on all these bones. Not only would Ezekiel still be there assembling bones, but if he ever finished, you know what he would have? He'd have a museum. Because never in a million, million years would he be able to, to make those bones take on flesh, breathe in air, stand up, and march. Only God can bring that kind of renewal. We try all kinds of things to quench the drought in our souls. We, we lose ourselves in diversions. Some of us shop. I love to shop. It's my, one of my favorite things to do. Some of us seek pleasure. Some of us try new relationships. Others of us douse our dryness with work or success or chemicals. We could keep on trying to reassemble our scattered selves and hydrate all the dryness for a million, million years, and we'd never succeed because only God brings renewal, and he has a particular way of doing that. See, Ezekiel could have, could have told great jokes, but those those bones would never have laughed. He could have told sad stories, but there would have been no tears. He could have crafted a compelling speech, but there would have been no stirring. Only God can bring renewal, and the particular way in which God does that is through his word. So Ezekiel whispered God's words, and the bones began to stir. He told God's story, and the bones began to assemble. He spoke God's speech, and the Spirit came, the Spirit of God came, and breathed life into those dead, dry bones. Every time you see the word breath, or breathe, or wind in Ezekiel 37, it's the same word in Hebrew as spirit. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 explains why Ezekiel's preaching the word to those bones brought life, because the word of God is alive and powerful. Only God brings renewal, revival, and restoration, and he does that through his word. Look, you and I are not going to self-restore. We are not going to perform a self-reboot. God is the only one who can do that for us. But we can put ourselves in a position to be influenced and affected and revived by God's powerful work. There is a pressure point we can press. There is some leverage we can exert, and that's by getting into the Word of God and letting the Word of God get into us. If you want to make a New Year's resolution, let me, let me nominate spending more time in God's Word and getting more of God's Word into me as your top candidate. I want to give you two or three practical ways we can do that, okay? How we can get more of the Word of God into us and experience revival. First, I want to ask you to put Sunday mornings on your calendar and just consistently be here. At 9 o'clock, we have Bible classes for all ages. Now, we didn't today, okay? You got a day off today. Next week, it's not going to be Bible classes, but we're going to have a thing. But in two weeks... We'll start our Bible classes again. We have classes for all ages, from the youngest to the oldest. You don't have to know a lot. I've talked to people recently who said, I don't want to come to Sunday school because I don't, I don't know much. That's exactly why you need to come. There's no minimum Bible knowledge requirement. No one is going to put you on the spot. If you will make Sunday morning Sunday school a family, spiritual, discipline, you will be blessed. I know Sunday school is so old-fashioned. I wish we would come up with a better name for it. It just sounds boring. Sunday school. But I've been in some of these classes, and they're anything but boring. Some of them get kind of wild. And then stick around for worship at 10. See, not only do we hear the word preached at this hour, but we see it symbolized in the Lord's Supper, and we sing it. Oh, my goodness, did you hear some of the songs we sang this morning? They were straight out of Scripture. Music brings the Word of God into your heart in a powerful way. I know you're busy. 
I know our schedules just crush us sometimes. I know getting everybody up and out of the house on a Sunday is not always easy, and you have a big fight on the way. I know that. But the benefit you receive by attending classes in worship on a consistent basis so far outweighs the hassle. You need to be in the Word, and, the, and, and you need for the Word of God to be in you. That's what brings revival. I, I strongly believe in this. I, I believe in it so strongly, I'll say this. If you will do that for six months, if you will, if you will make being here at 9 and 10 a consistent family discipline. You'll do that for six months and be active and engaged in it, and you still don't feel like you're being spiritually fed, then maybe we're not connecting with you in a way that gets you into the Word and gets the Word into your heart. I don't want to see anybody go anywhere else. Lisa and I have fallen in love with this church, and we want you to love it too, but I'd rather see you go and grow than stay and stagnate. That's how much I believe that. That if you'll make being here on Sunday mornings a consistent family discipline. It will help get the Word of God into you and you into the Word, and that brings revival. So make Sunday mornings a family discipline, and then get into the Word through the week. You, you can't just do it one day a week. It's got to be a daily discipline getting into the Word. Here's one way. Google or Bing, whichever one you prefer, Bible reading plan. Bible reading plan. In 0.37 seconds, you'll get 5 million results. Pick one. Follow it. Here's another. I downloaded the Twickenham app on my phone. I did the spiritual profile. And it sends me relevant verses twice a day, every day. 8 a.m., 8 p.m., my phone vibrates. I've gotten to where I look forward to it because I want to see what it's sending me. Sometimes I read them and I wonder, why did they send me that one? But sometimes it's just spooky. Okay, how many of you were with family over the holiday? Go ahead and raise your hand. I just want to see. How many of you were with family over the holiday? Okay, that's just about everybody at some point. Went great, didn't it? Fun. Everybody got along. There were no awkward moments. You felt refreshed and blessed by every encounter, and not once did you fall back into the old crazy ways that your family gave you that your shrink has been trying to help you get over, right? <laughs> so over the holiday, my phone buzzed at 8 p.m. one evening, and I knew it was the Twick app sending me a verse. Here's the verse that they sent me. You ready? It's titled, Difficult People. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach, be patient with difficult people. I was with family when that verse came in. <laughs> hey, Mom, if you're watching, it wasn't, I wasn't at your house. Not at your house, Mom. The Word of God is living and active. I'm telling you, you need to be in the Word through the week. It will renew, revive, and restore your soul. How are you doing? Really? How's your soul? Can you remember a time when your faith was stronger, younger, more alive? How's your commitment? Was there a time when you were more dedicated to God, more willing to bend your will to His, more eager to follow His lead? How's your love for God? Is it as warm and joyful as it once was? Is he on your mind during the week, or is he just a weekend appointment? Are you in need of revival, renewal, restoration? I'll tell you right now, it's really tempting to, to borrow Home Depot's tagline here and just say, let's do this. I think it'll be better to say instead, let's let God do this. And if we will let God do this, God will. Let's stand, we're going to have a prayer, and then we'll sing a song. Holy Father, we began this morning at the cross remembering that we were not able to create a way to bridge the distance our sin had created between us and you. And now we must confess that when the bridge is broken, we can't recreate it. 
We can't refresh, restore, revive, renew. This old, this old weird story from a strange prophet teaches us that renewal, revival, and restoration come from you and that you use your word, which shouldn't surprise us because you, your word created the universe. So it is nothing to you to recreate, to refresh, to renew and revive our souls. God, we pray for renewal and revival in our church. We pray that we will be on fire for you. That we will be into your word and your word will be into us because we've, if it is, if we do, it will change who we are. We pray that this year will be different not because of what we do, but because of what you do through us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you need prayers this morning, come on down front. We'll pray for you. Let's sing. Over all the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign. you reign in me again over every thought over every word may my life reflect the beauty of my lord because you mean more to me than any earthly thing so won't you reign in me again lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour you are the lord of all I am, so won't you reign in me again, Lord reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams, in my darkest hour you are the Lord of all I am, so won't you reign in me again, Lord reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams, in my darkest are you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? If you remain standing, just a couple of things as we close. Again, a reminder, next week, no regular classes, but we will be meeting with Shepherd Contacts at 9 o'clock in the morning next week in the classrooms. Uh, this one prayer request this morning, if you would keep Sarah McMurtry and her family in your prayers. Uh, Sarah lost her nephew on Christmas Day, so uh, she's struggling with that. Just keep her in your prayers, please. Uh, don't forget our holiday office hours. We're only open tomorrow. We'll be closed December the 29th through the 1st for the New Year's. Regular office hours resume on January the 4th. If you are a children's ministry parent and have not picked up your family devotional book, they are available downstairs in the fellowship hall. Please get those today so that you'll be ready to start the year. Thanks for being here. Cody, come on up. Let's sing one more chorus, and then uh, we'll close in prayer. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am, so won't you reign in me again. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for, all, for bringing us all here together to worship you today. And we just pray for all those who are sick and hurting and all those who are traveling this holiday season. And God, we just thank you for this, this week that, we, that you have given us to spend time with our friends and family and celebrate. And God, I just want to pray that although we may have received many gifts this season, I just pray that we never forget the ultimate gift that you gave us, the gift of your son. And I just want to pray that like the bones, that you can speak breath into us and we can be alive again. We love you and we thank you for all the things that you do. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.